please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and comment on the videos below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos. And if you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, visit the Bet Angel Academy, where we have detailed structured courses on how to trade without the distractions of other YouTube videos. But also don't forget to visit betangel.com and download a free trial. So when you first start trading, um, it's very tempting to sort of just go in all guns blazing. You, you've probably seen some videos on YouTube, you've seen a few, uh, or people have given you hints of tips, or you've read a web page uh, that's telling you about a particular strategy, and you just sort of launch yourself into it. It's quite a natural thing to do. But um, the, the process of actually trading properly uh, it takes a little bit more thought and consideration. But if you break it down into its component parts, it's quite easy to understand precisely what you should be doing and how to proceed safely. Now, what you see in the video behind me here is uh, somebody that sent me a video many years ago now, actually. I can't remember exactly what it was. But they gave me um, a, a demonstration of their trading and saying, what am I doing wrong? So other than the first click on this particular sequence of trading, there's almost nothing uh, that is correct about the way that this market is traded. And the reason I'm showing you this is to contrast it with something that I'll show you in a minute, which shows you really what your approach to trading should be. Um, on this particular video, we're looking at some scalping. And you can see here that um, this chap has placed a back order at 5.9, and then he's laid um, a position back in at 5.8. But almost immediately after that first click, I'd say that pretty much everything is wrong with the way that this market is traded. Um, the initial entry looks okay, uh, but the trade management, the money management, the stake management, um, all of the things related to the trade itself uh, sort of deteriorate more and more as this particular trade goes on. However, this is pretty much how I see a lot of people trade. It's very common to see people uh, make this mistake. And I remember somebody coming to the office once and saying to me, what am I doing wrong? So he did a little bit of trading for me. Um, and he said, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? And I said, yeah, no, it's, it's really simple. So I walked over to him and then started attacking him, basically, and pushing him around the chair and punching him. And, and he, it was like, what are you doing? And I said, that's what the market is doing to you. <laughs> and the market's completely bullying you and pushing you around. And uh, you've got to stop letting it do that. You've got to go in with a trade with a clearly defined objective. Um, and then you, you know, exit that trade and then you can perhaps repeat that process again. But what you see is going on in the video behind me is basically completely the opposite. There's no concept of um, a, a clean entry, a clean exit um, and of the management of the position. There are just lots of positions going into the market. Um, there appears to be very little structure to this particular trade. Um, and you can see uh, dumping a position here because it's gone very wrong. We're only using 10 pound stakes, but you know, we're down five or six pound. Um, and then at, towards the end of this video, which is why I wanted to show it to you, uh, you can see what happens um, at that particular point then. Basically, you can see just lots of random clicking at this particular moment in time. I'm not trying to be funny or derogatory to the person that did this video. Um, because this was them doing their first bit of trading. Uh, they're clicking around all over the place. There's no particular sense of management in terms of the way that the position should be uh, taken to the market and managed thereafter. And it eventually degenerates into just loads of random clicking. And I'd say that's 90% of the mistake that I see uh, brand new traders make. Um, there's no structure to this trade at all. There's, n there's no concept of managing a position or particularly what the objective is in this particular uh, trade. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at exactly how you should really do this particular trade. So we're looking at the ladder interface here. We've got a load of runners on the screen. So where should we start in terms of trying to create uh, a sensible trading plan for trading this market? Well, the interesting thing is actually you shouldn't start on the ladder screen, you should start in Guardian because if you look at all of the markets that are going through over the course of the day, the next race up at the moment is going to be a maiden. Um, they've got a maiden hurdle, a novice handicap hurdle, um, some handicap races, and you know. And if you look at what's happening on the screen, you can see that they're, they're all different. And you know that's the thing about the markets is that no two markets are the same. So if you use a generic strategy generically in generic markets going to end up with a generic result. So part of the 
process that you need to go through when trading is to look at the markets and understand, um, you know, are there markets that I like, that I don't like, that I get on with, that I don't get on with, and you structure your trades around there. Now, to start with, you're going to have to probably trade all of them, but you'll quickly learn which sort of types of behavior um, that you like within the markets and the way that they behave, and if there are some markets that you do or don't like. So when I first started trading, um, this was the approach that I did, was go through all of the markets, understand uh, what's in front of you, and then see if you can start to see some repeating patterns. And the first repeating pattern I saw was that some markets I kept losing money on, and I just thought, I'm going to cut those markets out. I'm not going to actively trade those markets. Um, so yeah, you know, if if I apply the same market, same market, the same strategy to each one of these markets, I'll get different results. And that's not because of your trading ability. And that's because each of these markets is slightly differently, um, act slightly differently. So that's where you start. Is you start looking at the markets. You start beginning to form a plan around what you're going to do in each one of those markets. So let's have a look um, at the next one that's coming up and um, we'll see if, if there's something that we can do here. So it may be that, you know, you look at this particular market, you sort of say, oh, I recognize this and I don't particularly like font well um, and other characteristics and therefore I'm not going to deploy this strategy in this market. Or maybe you have like five strategies and your role as a trader is to then match that strategy to the market. So you'll look at this market and you'll sort of say, okay, I think I recognize, you know, what could happen in this market and therefore I'm going to deploy a certain strategy. So your approach should be to look at the market, understand the general theme that's occurring within the market and then deploy a strategy in it that you think will match that particular uh, range of activity. So um, we can have a look at Fontwell here. Uh, we can have a look at the charts to give some sort of longer term idea of what's going on. So can you see here the price on the favorite started at two and a half. It's come into about two and it's going back out. And there was some unusual activity in the market at this point. But you can see the trend on this is for the price to generally go out. Now, at some point, this will probably get value and the trend will flip around. Um, and then we look at, um, I mean, it's an unusual market for this spike that's occurring. So I'm going to have a quick flick through. But can you see, even now, we're beginning to form an opinion on what's likely to happen in this market or why, or that something unusual has happened. So maybe that something unusual um, is a warning sign to perhaps not trade this market. But you can see the, the favorites going out, the second favorites coming in. And so those two are interacting quite heavily. Um, the third favorite is sort of not going anywhere. So immediately you begin to see that there's interaction on the front two. If you think you know what's going to happen on those, you can actively trade those. Or perhaps on this occasion, we step down to the third favorite and decide because that's behaving a bit more rationally, that maybe we'll have a look at this one. It's near a crossover point. There's another factor that you may want to take into account. So I'm going to switch on global settings on the ladder. I'm going to do an offset bet on here. We're going to offset it by one tick. Um, we're going to do a fill or kill bet for 30 seconds, so that will hold the order in the market for 30 seconds. Um, and when that order gets matched, it will offset that position for us. And I'm going to do it a, a, with, with use small stakes. When you're learning to trade, it's better to be a little bit experimental and to you know, use small stakes while you learn uh, to understand the way that the markets work. So we can see there's been a little bit of money here for uh, this particular runner. You can see it's traded a low down here, I'm just trying to see, I mean, there's a, there's a mixture of, you know, so we're, we're near the lower end of the trading range here. So in order for the price on this one to go out, we want these two this to come in. The uh, favorite has received a little bit of backing support. You remember me saying the price is going out, but it's probably reached value, so it's gonna come in. And the opposite is happening to the second favorite. But um, let's put a trade into this market. What I'm gonna do, this is touching new territory um, down here at this particular moment in time. So I'm gonna pop a little trade down here you can see it's been matched and offset by Bet Angel, um, but you can see that at the moment we're slightly um, at a small loss on this particular selection. So what should we do now? Now, what you see a lot of traders do is um, just completely panic at this particular point um, and start swapping and changing things around. So they're trying to dig out a position from here. They're trying to uh, make this position uh, work. Uh, particularly well for them. So they'll start modifying things, chasing. But at that point, then the price very often flips back and goes in the other direction. So 
the, the trading process from a proper perspective is you open a trade, you set a boundary around that trade, and then that trade completes or it doesn't complete and you end up having to take a loss. So the decision that I've made here on this particular trade is that um, the price has been backed in quite a bit. It's near the low end of its trading range. However, I'm sort of expecting that the price is going to go up. So I'm not going to panic when the price moves against me, but I would be entering the trade and then looking further down here and saying, at this point, I would probably close the trade. And can you see it's completed? So we have successfully done that trade. So do we think that the position is ready for us to do that again? Yeah, I think we could probably do that again. So I'll put the position into the market. Bet Angel has offset it for us automatically. Um, and then we have to wait for that position to change. So can you see what I'm not doing is going in, all guns blazing, trying to get this trade to complete, desperately hoping to get a profitable trade. I'm sort of saying, right, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And then we'll wait to see what the outcome is. The market doesn't go in a straight line. The market meanders and wobbles and all over the place. So you can see we're getting close to getting that position matched, but we still don't have that position matched. Um, but, you know, we would look down here and say, okay, what do we think is a tolerable loss? Do we think if the price gets down to here that we're going to have to take our position out? Um, but you, can you see the favourites drifting again, second favourites coming in? Those two are interacting, but everybody's forgotten about the third favourite. So you can see we've been matched again. So, you know, do we think we're ready to go again around here? Well, maybe we don't want to put it in where the current uh, price activity is. Maybe we want to put it down here where reasonable amounts of money has been matched. Using a fill or kill order, it's perfectly possible to do that. Uh, because Bet Angel will offset that position, we could even put one in above it as well. So I can take my hands off the keyboard. Bet Angel will get that matched, offset the position for us. And you can see that it's, it's done it again for us. So, hey presto, there you go. There's a couple of trades, uh, you know, gone through or modified for you. So can you see how we're in complete control of this position? The favourite's gone rocketing off the top of the, char of the, of the ladder. The second favourite has gone rocketing off the bottom, but we're just sort of going, well, you know, you, you get on with that. We, we don't care what you're doing. Uh, we're going to do our own thing. We're going to look at it in a methodical manner, and we're going to deploy a strategy, and we're going to actively manage that strategy. Let's have a look at the chart of the, of the favourite again. So there you can see, this is where the price came in, and then it's shooting back out again. If we look at Dalak, you can see that um, it drifted out slightly, and then it's being heavily backed in. But the net effect of the two is to just put a bit of gentle pressure on the third favourite here. We've, you know, I haven't traded this aggressively. You can see I've been quite passive deliberately to contrast the previous video that you've seen. But um, what I'm doing here is if I could have traded this more aggressively and got more trades through. I could have held the position for longer. I could have spread the, the exit position out over a wider range of prices. You've probably seen me do that on other videos. But what I'm trying to do here is simplify the process for you to say that if you're starting to trade, then this is effectively uh, the way that you should trade. You need to be in control of the trading process. You need to say, this is where I'm going in. This is where I feel uncomfortable, but I'm going to give it some time for this position to get matched out. You don't put a trade in and think, oh, that's gone terrible. Let's throw a few more orders in and then change your mind as it moves two ticks against you. And then once the price goes up, you suddenly realize, you, you know, you don't do that. You don't let the market bully you. You go in with a clearly defined strategy. You deploy that strategy and you can see however I would have traded this, whether I was going in and then closing my position now or putting repeated bets in, this would be a perfectly good trade. So you've seen me look at the market to start with. You've seen me execute a plan in control, almost hands off. You know, I haven't had to do much on this particular position. Didn't trade it particularly aggressively. You could have done this just as easily. And now that we're heading up to post time, all I need to do is hedge that position. We've got a profit on that particular runner. And if I click on the um, hedge button up here, then that will spread that profit across the field. And we've made some money. And you can see it wasn't particularly stressful. The market didn't beat me up. It was very clearly defined. We could have traded that in a number of ways. Uh, but whichever way we would have traded that, it would have been profitable.